Hey everybody, Grandmaster Ben Feingold here with recaps from round seven. We're going to look at the game Judah versus Nakamura. Let's have a look. The, the first game, Nakamura played this event that didn't start E4, E5. So we have a Nimzo Indian. Uh, Queen C2 has been the most popular move for quite some time, but E3 is second most popular. And they played one of these lines where somebody gets an isolated pawn. It could be white, it could be black. In this game, it turned out it was white. We've seen positions like this a lot. White's a slightly better, just, just slightly. White threatened checkmate. There's a chess coach I know who said whoever check whoever threatens checkmate and one first has the advantage. So the engine does say white's a little bit better. Now Karen was perplexed here. She's like knight g6, knight g6. And I, I couldn't do the stream anymore. She was so loud. I was like, ah, stop. Right? Is that what happened? Instead, he played f5, weakening his e6 pawn. And Karen went, boo, boo. I used to root for Naka. Now I'm rooting for Duda. Okay. And Duda played bishop b3, putting pressure on this diagonal. The engine says f5 is fine. Black is slightly worse. Queen b6, attacking the bishop. Knight takes d5, defending the bishop. Takes, takes, takes. Bishop f4. Dude is trying to get a good knight versus bad bishop scenario. Now, you're not forced to take the bishop. In fact, you wouldn't want to because the knight wants to go to f4. So Naka took his useless rook on a8, put it on e8. Good square. And in this position, Duda played a move the engine wasn't thrilled with, g3. It wanted to play something like queen d2 or take the bishop first and then play knight c3. But Duda wanted to play knight f4, and he wasn't going to be stopped. Bishop f4, knight f4, rook e4. This was the antidote. The engine thought Naka defended correctly here by doing this, and now the game is just equal. If we take this pawn, we can take either way on d4, probably with the queen, and it's just too boring of a position for anybody to win. Duda wanted to win with the good knight versus bad bishop, so he played rook e d1, protecting his pawn, threatening this. Now Naka made a very slight inaccuracy according to the engine. Naka probably won't agree. He should play bishop a4, activating his bishop, attacking the rook, but he played bishop c6. h4 was played. Again, the engine wants to play bishop a4. R doubles rooks on the f on the, the e file. And now, after queen c3, uh, ostensibly to play knight d3 later and get the knight to a good square, and possibly even queen c5 and try to get a good end game. Um, and mo probably most important to play rook e1 and kick the rook off of e4 and try to take the e file. Three dollars. Thanks, party party. Uh, instead, black played g6 instead of making another kind of waiting move. And the engine doesn't like this. It's too weakening, it says. And in this position, after g6, we're finally... The engine says white is clearly better. White made quite a bad move here. Um, white should play a4 and then play b3 and really crush this bishop. The bishop's just going to sit on c6 the whole game. Instead, white gave black a chance, and you don't have to ask Naka twice. Uh, after b4, okay, if it's white's move, but it's okay. We could play a4 or queen b3, but it's not white's move. Black plays bishop a4. Black's bishop is in the game now. Queen c6, and our bishop isn't just stuck here on c6. Queen c5, trying to trade queens favorably, but if you trade everything, it's going to be a draw. And Naka said, draw? That's just my game. So he traded rooks, traded queens, put the bishop on c6, Papa John's. He said, you can't win. I just sit here. So Duda wanted to win. Duda has the good knight versus bad bishop. So he said, let's trade rooks. And Naka said, how about I win your d-pawn? Let's do that instead. Duda defended his d-pawn, 96. Bishop d7. No, no, I'm going to take your knight. Then I'm going to take the d-pawn. Duda played knight d8, attacking the pawn on b7. Rook takes the pawn on d4. Now in this position, white can play rook e7, which he did. Or he can play knight takes b7, if he really wants to win. Unfortunately, it's not clear what white should do now. White wants to play rook e7, obviously, so we can play king f8. 
We don't play king f7 because knight d6 check, and we want to play rook c4 anyway. Stopping the rook from infiltrating, the rook has nowhere to go. And after like rook c4, d4, bishop c6, eventually black's going to be better. That bishop's going to get good. And the engine says this is equal, but that white has to be careful. So instead he played rook e7, activating his rook. Naka decided to play for the draw because it is a draw, bishop c6. And here uh, Duda gave up. He didn't resign. He gave up trying to win. Uh, he's down a pawn. These two pawns are weak. There's nothing really much for white to do. So they just vacuumed the board. They traded all the pawns. And they got to move 40. And before taking the pawn on a3, since this is actually both sides have made move 40, black was allowed to offer a draw and white accepted, but obviously, frankly. So a very well-played game. The only tiny little mistakes were Naka playing g6 and the response in this position, g6 strategically maybe not right, b4, the rest of the game virtually perfect, and the game ended in this dead-drawn position where white was going to play rook takes a3. So another draw, we have Duda at minus one, Nakamura 50% after the first half of the tournament. Thanks for watching the recap of round seven on YouTube. You can watch live coverage at twitch.tv slash GM Benjamin Feingold, and we'll see you tomorrow for round eight. Bye, everyone.